Go. Hey, everybody, specifically LinkedIn, we are back with another episode of Cyber Chat with Antoine Matthews. And I am, dude, I am hyped. We've been planning this interview for like three weeks, it seems. Uh, I got my main man, Abdi, on. And before, I don't, I don't want to big you up too much. Can you go ahead and tell people, you know, who you are? Just introduce yourself. Yo, what's up, everybody? My name is Abdi Muhammad. You know, I'm an early career cybersecurity engineer. I'm, you know, passionate about learning, passionate about, you know, uh, you know, uh, learning, learning boxing, you know, staying healthy. And, you know, overall, just, uh, yeah, I love, I love this field. You love <laughs> this field. about me. Yeah, you know, early career cybersecurity engineer, born in San Diego, California, moved out to Florida, you know, and, uh, yeah. Dude, so that's, that's a lot to unpackage. All right there in the intro. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, man. So first you said early in your cyber um, security career. So Correct. if you don't mind me, like, so what are you doing right now? Like when you say early, like what, what, what's your role? So right now I'm a, I'm a cyber system security engineer. You know, I conduct vulnerability assessments on systems, you know, examine uh, any weaknesses we may have on systems and then go about, um, go about uh, uh, creating remediation plans to, to patch those vulnerabilities. Okay. So, for people that aren't too familiar with the industry, can you walk like just on a typical day what things might look like for you, like going to the office or even if you're at the office, I don't know, it's COVID. So yeah. it might be a little different. Yeah, I mean, typically a typical day for me, I, I, I come in the office, you know, I open up my email, right? You examine <laughs> emails, any meetings you might have. I have a scrum call in the morning with my team. We go over what everyone everyone's doing as far as their projects are concerned. Are we meeting those requirements? If we're not meeting those requirements, how can we get help to get those things taken care of? And then uh, from my, my bad, real quick, real, so I do everything slow just so people. Oh, my bad, my no, bad. no, 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 we, we good, we, we good money, we yeah. good money. So yeah. I, I know what it is, but can you explain to our audience what Scrum is? So you said a Scrum right. meeting, so what is that? So, um, Scrum meeting is, um, so Scrum is a, is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is part of the agile methodology, so it's a pretty much as a framework used to get projects completed, right? It's a template to get projects uh, completed, like basic amount of steps you need to do so scrum um scrum is is pretty much um where we all everyone on the team uh shares hey what tasks they may be they may be doing what exact tasks and what um what what else they what else what tasks they're doing and what they need uh help on if necessary and uh and you kind of assign tasks during scrum too like hey can does anyone have bandwidth to do xyz you know, anyone have time? Does anyone have time to do this, that, or the third? So Scrum is part of the overall um, agile, um, agile framework. So it's just a way. Uh, Scrum is a way of doing things, and uh, we do Scrum every day, pretty much. Like gotcha. we need it every day to get to get our projects completed. All right, my bad. I didn't want to cut you off. Just wanted to make sure we was all on the same page, my man. All right, so let's keep it rolling. For sure, for sure. Yeah, no, you are definitely right. I want to keep this as 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 uh, as as uh, as bite sizable and, and 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 digestible as possible. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I forget. I'm I'm talking to a whole group of people, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got the world right now, man. This is this is the internet. Yeah. It's living forever, baby. Yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure, man, for sure. I'm probably gonna look back at this and be like, "What the hell was I saying?" <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we start the morning off. We we got the scrum meeting, and yeah. so what's the continuous of the day? So from there, you know, I go down. Um, I go down. I, I go down to the to our production floor. And I examine, you know, what uh, assets that I need to get uh, scanned. And then uh, once I scan, I, 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 I configure the assets. And once I configure the assets, I grab my scanner laptop and, you know, and I have my uh, scanning software, right? Okay. I plug, I plug my scanning software inside each laptop via the Ethernet cables and the switch. I plug them all together on one. Uh, I get them all together pretty much. I plug my Ethernet cables on the switch to all the laptops and plug the Ethernet cable inside my scanner laptop. And then, you know, I kick off the scan using a software called Nessus. Right? Mm. So Nessus is one of the uh, uh, softwares that uh, scans for vulnerabilities. So I kick off the scan and I go back to my, uh, I go back to my, uh, my desk. And then for the next hour or so, I'm pretty much creating tasks, setting up other meetings, you know, or doing process improvement. And then once the scan is done, I go back to the production floor, grab the scan results, and then I analyze the results. Got you. And so, all right. So with the Nessus, is that's a vulnerability scanner, right? Correct. 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 So once you get 
you know, the scan results back from, you know, from your asset and, and you say you kind of analyze it, what, what's that look like? Are you looking for specific um, vulnerabilities that can be exploited or do you go a step further than that? Yeah, for us, it's, it's very, it's very high. It's relatively high level. Like we use the uh, security technical implementation guide, Stigs. So we, um, yeah, we use the, the Stigs. So the Stigs capture any weaknesses on the system. So um, either it'll be open, you know, the open vulnerability or like, um, you know, it'll be not a finding, right? So we get a bunch of different possible vulnerabilities based off the Stigs and the Nessus scan. And whatever we see that's uh, that's open, we kind of then do some digging and work with uh, the systems engineers to get that fixed. But sometimes um, I actually have to go back on the on the to the laptops on the production floor to figure out um, figure out. I have to kind of carry out manual checks, like manual vulnerability scans, right? Because oh, automated man. vulnerability, yeah. Because sometimes the automated vulnerability scans it might not catch everything. So that we might have a couple of different uh, checks that I look on the, I look on our uh, file and say, okay, these checks weren't completed. We need to go down there and get those done. So that may take a little bit more time. And usually we get about, you know, 10 to 20 check manual checks, just depending on the system. Okay. So yeah. with, with the, um, without going too far in the detail, I'm kind of curious cause you know me on, the, I'm on the other side. So I like to, to break into stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. what, what kind of vulnerabilities do you find? Is it anything like you can find out in the wild or like right. any like, I think you kind of get what I'm saying. Uh, oh, yeah, just like, a, yeah, just general vulnerabilities. You know, you'll see something like uh, our IP address wasn't configured properly or like uh, the file, the, um, you know, uh, the file may not be configured properly or, you know, it's missing like a Microsoft patch that came out a few months ago, something like that. You know? Got you. All right. And then in your role as, you know, the, the engineer, can you can you talk to us about why that's so important? Like you running these scans and then even going back and analyzing and getting with different, you know, groups within the organization? Yeah, that that. Yeah. Like you said right there, getting with different groups. That's that's extremely important because I kind of I'm the engineer that kind of works in the supply chain. Right. And, you know, we get the, the machines are built up. One team builds them up. Another team, you know, adds the software applications on there. Another team conducts the vulnerability scans, which is my team. Yeah. The scans. And another team, you know, packages them up and sends them out to where they need to go. So um, the importance of that is like whenever, as a business, from a business perspective, whenever you're creating products and you're, and you're, you're, you're delivering to a customer, you want to make sure you get the best product out there, right? Mm -hmm. So what my team does is make sure that, you know, the product we get out there is a high quality product. The only way you know something is a high quality, you know, uh, product like for a laptop, for example, is an, is to examine the the software and make sure that you know softwares don't have any significant vulnerabilities that can be exploited by bad by bad guys, right? Mm -hmm. Our customers are obviously, you know, customers could be go from different countries, right? Yeah. Want to make sure, and these are these 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 assets are very you know very expensive assets, and they're very valuable. So we our team. What we do is make sure we do our due diligence to make sure those assets are as secure as possible. I mean, you're never going to get 100% security, right? I mean, <laughs> there's, a new, there's a new attack, there's a new uh, uh, vulnerability to exploit every day. But with, with us, we it's, it's, it's doing your due diligence, right? Making sure that everything is good to go and that it can be delivered in the time of that. So I, I know you said, so it's a lot of different moving pieces. It, I, I looked at it like almost as, as an assembly line. Like you do your yeah. piece, other people do their piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, assembly, it's literally assembly line. That's what it is. <laughs> so like, it's, it's a digital assembly line for y'all so y'all can get the idea behind it. You know, everything is a process. We, we build on each other. Mm -hmm. So after, you know, you do your initial analysis and it goes through the rest of the team, is it a continuous process once that asset is done? Or um, is it like once you guys got it nailed down, do you just pass it off to the, to the client or whoever it may be used for? Right. For us, once we, we once we get it down, we send it back to the systems engineers and they look at our our findings and they kind of do their analysis. OK, these are the findings. You know, this is what the cybersecurity team came up with. Sometimes there, there are some things that they need to fix. Most of the time they don't have to fix much, but uh, it just, it just kind of depends right what we're getting. But once the systems engineers take a look at it after we're done, now the quality, uh, quality, quality uh, assurance folks come in and they start begin the, the packaging and mm -hmm. whatnot, the packaging. So got you. So now, nah, man, so that that's thank you. That 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 was a very concise uh you know day in the life. And you know, usually we want to do videos on this, but hey, you know, we got the good conversation to walk the people through it. 
So you did say that, you know, you're early in your career in cybersecurity. What led you into cybersecurity or even the role that you're in right now? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually coming up on two years next week. Two years next week. Yeah, what, what's the next week? Yeah, yeah, next week I, on the 17th. On the 17th. I'll be, in, I'll be uh, two years in. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah the, what got me into it was like I was an undergrad, so – I first, when I was an undergrad, I went to community college first. I studied economics. My original goal was to become an economist. You know, I really felt like, yo, like, economics, I love it. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. And, then, and then I realized, you know, becoming an economist, it, it's, it's a discipline. It takes a long time to become an economist. And, you know, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't believe at the time that I was going to see, you know, um, a good return on my investment, a good amount of money fresh out of college as an economist. So I was like, okay, well, you know, how about probably looking at tech? You know, uh, I went to, I, I went to, I transferred to San Diego State University with an associate's degree in economics and then transferred uh, in tech. But the thing is, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So I was like, you know what, let me just major in uh, management information systems. So management information systems, the study of how to use technology to solve business problems, you know, huh. and, I, and you and I both know if someone understands technology and understands business, that creates a very unique skill set because what is technology ultimately for? To enable Business. businesses. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I was studying MI, uh, MIS and then I, I originally I wanted to just be like a, like a, like a project, uh, like a project manager or like, a, what do you call, what do you call entry level project managers? Like project coordinators? Yeah. Business analysts? We 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 gonna go to just the beginner. You know the project manager. You the person. Yeah, yeah. Before, before, the project, before you become a project manager. Yeah. <laughs> you know what we mean? <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm pretty much like a business analyst, and I think um, that's that's what I wanted to do early on. You know, I was like, oh, it's kind of technical. It's morally business. That's fine. And then uh, I was interning for uh, for this man named Dr. Hodge, who's the VP of IT at San Diego State University. And he told me, he said, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "What do you mean? What am I doing? I know what I'm doing. I'm I'm, I'm being a business analyst." He said, "Now nah, you should look into cybersecurity." I, I, my, this, this is an old, this is an older gentleman. He was about you know fifty years old. The guy's he's a subject matter expert in Unix systems, like operating systems. He he he's a multidisciplinary. He's the VP of IT. He understands IT at the bottom all the way to the strategic level. Right? Yeah, so I knew his stuff. He has he has like 20, 30 years of experience. So point yeah. being, when when he told you this, it was hey, let me listen to this man. Well, first I shut him. I shut him down first time. The first time he brought it up, I shut him down. You know, <laughs> you know sometimes you, sometimes you think you're you're the smartest things in sliced bread you're the hottest things in sliced bread but the uh, first th time i shut him down and then I, th I think two three weeks later he said yo you should look in a cyber security and I, and I did some research and i was like whoa like this cyber security thing is 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 is, is, is still a baby it's still developing like it's not it's, <laughs> it's no way it's no it's not even not even, like the market's still developing and just seeing you know obviously the money you know that was a big factor you know um uh, but also just seeing like the potential growth for this field and the paths to become an exception in this field. There's just so many. Yeah. Like, for God's sake, there's cyber insurance. Like, man, and that's a real thing. That's a real thing. <laughs> you know what's crazy before cybersecurity? That wasn't something that even existed. Mm -hmm. We just saw, like you said, the infancy debate. Oh man, I'm sorry. This is your, this is your shine, brother. This is your yeah, shine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, you know, and then Dr. Hodge, um, I had one of one of my one of my one of my uh, friends. He was in cybersecurity, but I didn't know he was in cybersecurity. But he also knew Dr. Hodge. And Dr. Hodge told him, "Hey, go check in with him. Ask him how he's doing in cybersecurity." And like he just the guy told me, "Like, hey, you know, I make a decent amount of money. I make a decent amount. I do some really cool uh, projects." And he told me, "Yeah, this field is very. Um, I mean, it's been around for a decent amount of time, but it's 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 still developing, and it's finally getting some like, like people are starting to take it more serious, right?" Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, where it's right now. You know what's fun? I got a little analogy. I I, I think of it like uh, the QR code. This is gonna sound like you think a QR code, a QR code. So yeah. my background is in marketing, and I, I fell in love with the QR code when I first seen it. That's technology, right? right There's right, all right, right. different things you can use it for. And right. people, they were like, "What are you talking about?" Like I had a QR code on my business card. They didn't know how to use it, know how to operate. But then the pandemic hit, and you don't want to touch anything. Now those QR codes are hot. That's the same everything. thing with cybersecurity. Like you said, it's been yeah. around for a while. You start to notice all of these changes, and now it's a must-have. Correct. Yeah, it's 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 a must-have. It's a must-have. It's 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 not. It's entered the C-suite. 
You know what I mean? It's, I like it's, that. It's a C-suite, right? It's, it's, it's very valuable. And uh, for me, you know, I talked to Malcolm, you know, he, he gave me some tips and pointers. And then that led to me talking to uh, another man named John. And then I started just networking like crazy with different, different individuals who are in cybersecurity. I talked to pen testers. I talked to, uh, I talked to like a CISO. I talked to uh, early career, mid career. You know, I talked to multiple individuals. Well, now mo- most of these guys that I, that I contacted during that time, during uh, my undergrad, I mean, they're still my friends today. And yeah, they they kind of they kind of broke down what cybersecurity is. And I think the best advice I ever got is, you know, when you're trying to break into this industry, you need to understand what is the value add for cybersecurity? What is the role of cybersecurity? What is it doing? And how we talked about it earlier, the goal of cybersecurity is to enable businesses to carry out their daily processes without without no, you know, without no mishaps, right? Yeah, yeah. Carry out their mission to carry out their, their values, so. So real quick, let's let's go. Let's move backwards a little bit again, because we yeah. got people on every level. So right. when you said you got excited about networking and you were touching, you know, and really getting your name out there, but getting familiar yeah. with people in the industry. How did you do that? Yeah, that's definitely a good question. So for me, um, the, the main way to, to get in touch with people in the industry, you have to be a bit, a bit humble, you know, since you're early on, you have to like literally go on LinkedIn and D, like DM the guy and say, hey, let's DM the guy or girl, you know, DM the person, DM the individual, say, hey, listen, um, I'm an undergrad and I'm studying this. I'm really interested in cybersecurity. And I was wondering, you know, if, if you could take a quick call or you to a quick call, I'm willing to pay you. I'm going to take you out to lunch or coffee. Like you, you got to make it clear you got to make it clear that it's a value exchange from the beginning, you know? Yeah. And for me, that's what I did. And I, I was fortunate enough to have uh, individuals, you know, already one, one individual already in my friendship circle, but I, I told myself that wasn't enough. I need to connect with more people in this field to get a broader understanding. You know, most of the time people rejected my lunch and. Uh, yeah. I was going to ask you that. So what yeah. was your- what was your rate? Were you 100 for 100 every time you reached out to somebody? They were so eager to hear you. Well, well, I, I was, I would say I was more, I was more like, like 60. percent You know what I mean? Which is pretty good. If you're, if you're, yeah. if you're keep, you keep shooting, that, that's a pretty good <laughs> percentage, right? You know, 60 percent of people were reaching back out to me, and whenever I offered money, most of the time they said no, because most people actually want to help others. Yeah, right? yeah. Most people actually want to help others. When you were like meeting people, um, what were some of the questions that you asked them, you know, that, that helped you get a better understanding of cybersecurity? Yeah, so I asked them initially, okay, um, what got you in cybersecurity? You know, did you, did you start off in this field? Did you kind of morph into the field? Like kind of like you said, you started out, you were doing marketing before and you kind of came into this field, which is, I think most cyber professionals because since, since it's still relatively growing, most cyber professionals, they kind of morphed into cybersecurity, right? They didn't mm-hmm. start off with that discipline. So I, I would ask them that question, like, how did you get into cybersecurity? You know, what experiences did you have to get into cybersecurity? How did you market yourself as someone who understands cybersecurity and break into the field, given that you came from a completely other discipline? Man. Right? How did you do that? And that, because that, that's, that's one of the biggest questions I had. Because, you know, um, I only took like one cybersecurity course during undergrad. And I had some internship experience, but I asked, hey, given my experience, I asked one of my mentors, like, hey, given my experience, how do I tailor this to make it clear to the organization that I'm applying for that I understand the basic principles of cybersecurity and I can actually be a value add to you because of this experience? Yeah, yeah, man, that's like one of the biggest things. Like that was like personally, when I was going through my, my program, that yeah. was the hardest thing for me to figure out is how do I translate yeah. my skills and abilities into something that is an asset or beneficial to an organization? So, man, that, that, that that's solid, man. It, it sounds like you had, you know, the, 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 the OG definitely bless you, you know, and he already helped out. I was, one fortunate. Of your... <laughs> I, was fortunate. I was fortunate. I was very fortunate. And, and, and I think a lot of people don't understand, like, no matter what, no matter what discipline you come from, you have experience. You just gotta understand how do you how do you how do you articulate yourself and market yourself, right? Like marketing, you know what you do. <laughs> like, how do you market yourself, given the skills experience you have, and tailor that as a cybersecurity professional? Because we all have transferable skills. Yeah, I, hey, I think you I think you hit it on a nail when we first started talking, and you said you know one of the most important things for somebody getting into cyber is understanding the importance of cyber. 
and understanding mm-hmm. what it is. And, and once you get that understanding, then you can start to look at other things you're doing or your past experiences and how they can tie into where you're trying to go. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. I mean, like um, being resourceful, knowing, knowing how to use Google, you know, knowing how to research those type of skills that that kind of transfers to other fields already. But that's mm-hmm. a very relevant uh, skill in the cybersecurity field. Right. Uh, working, working in teams, dealing with different personalities that works in almost every field. That's a valuable thing in cybersecurity. You're going to be yeah. working with all types of people. You're going to be working with mid-career people, older people, younger people. It's, it's there's transferable skills. And, and the first thing, like you said, like, you know, understanding the role of cybersecurity and understanding what what can I do to tailor my skills on my resume, on my sales pitch or interview that that can convince them to, hey, I am a value add. Just give me a, a chance. Got you. So, all right. So, you are. Did you ever change your uh, undergrad, or did you? Oh, my, my major. Yeah. Did you change your major? Yeah. So I went from economics to and I switched to management information systems. I mean, there was computer science and and uh, other like electrical engineering, but I didn't change it from MIS because I understood. Okay. I understood based off of different conversations, like MIS is is a very uh it's a very fluid uh degree. It's a very fluid degree, right? You know, mm-hmm. you, you get, if I wanted to become like a just strictly business, like a sales guy, I could have done that. Or I wanted to be like an account, maybe accountant. You got options accountant. with that. It's not so yeah, specialized. I, it's not so specialized because the, because the basic premise of MIS is technology and business and how, how, how do you use technology to solve business? And pretty much every listen, listen to my man. I'm gonna drop a gem. I, I gotta get a sound effect for dropping gems. You don't have a lot of them in your conversation. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that was one of them. <laughs> yeah, like the like. Yeah, so with an MIS degree, it's so it's the, the paths to different disciplines with that is a lot because every tech, every every uh business is using technology to a degree. An accountant is using technology, right? A business analyst is using technology, right? So it, everyone's using technology. Everybody so. is using technology. Everyone's using right. Yeah. So yeah, like, everyone. Let me, get, let me get the both best of both worlds. But I got the MIS degree. I didn't bother changing uh, majors, but what I did was I made sure I told my boss. I was interning for that at the time. I said, "Hey, let me do projects that can that can potentially make me a better candidate in the cybersecurity field." Oh, and, and where were you, where, where was your internship at? It's a, it was at San Diego State University. Oh, okay. So no, that's yeah. cool. And when you asked them, um, you know, can I get involved in more projects? What what kind of stuff were they able to put you on? Yeah, I, I yeah, crazy thing. I was I actually did some uh some vulnerability scanning. I was fortunate enough to do some vulnerability scanning using uh it was Qualys. Qual- yeah, Qualys okay, that's what we use. Yeah, okay, yeah, so that's that that one's big. That one's big in the market, right? And I kind of I, I I was uh scanning uh different assets on the campus and you know doing some analysis on those assets as well. But um, I mean, I didn't get to do as much as I'm doing now. But that little bit of experience there, it, it was it um. It helped a lot because I shared that in my interview, and they're like, "Oh, you already you already know what this stuff is." You, you know <laughs> well, come on over. And <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, just to rewind for everybody, so these are gems that I picked up throughout your conversation so far. Is first, be open to to guidance from yeah. other people. Um, after that, be involved. You know, make sure that you can reach out to people and, you know, it doesn't matter if people turn you down, but definitely shoot your shot and see if you can network and build those relationships. And then after that, make sure that you're actually being able to practice these skill sets, because it sounds like once you actually able to get those projects, that internship, it helped you out a lot when you put the resume together and you got to your job. It was a game changer. It was a game changer. And, and you know, funny thing is, I actually worked as a medical record specialist fresh out of high school. So I was, I was scanning physical paper, like a bunch of paper records, right? And I was, and I was scanning them into the computer and making sure that each, each, uh, each patient had the right medical record attached to their name. Funny thing is, HIPAA, right? We had to, do, we had to, <laughs> we had to be HIPAA compliant. That's why we were, we were uh, uh, saying, sending all the data, uh, all the information, the paper uh, information digital. And I put that on my resume. I said, hey, I, I worked in a HIPAA, HIPAA compliance uh, type of environment. The HIPAA compliance is part of cybersecurity. Right. So that helped me a lot right there. And um, I, and this is why I keep telling people you do you act, you, you need to do some deep thinking and, and, and tell yourself you actually do have uh, experience that is relevant to the cybersecurity field. You just haven't discovered it yet. You haven't done yeah. enough of the work yet. You know, I man, I would say, you know, you, you I know we weren't that's not the focus of the conversation like hip and compliance. 
Yeah, but yeah. just for the listeners, that in itself is a career in cyber or in yeah. tech. You know, and you don't even have to be the person, you know, that's putting, you know, these frameworks together using things like this. You could be somebody that's going in and making sure that people are compliant. So these are other things that you could look into if you are interested in cybersecurity. So one of the things that I was kind of curious about is I know that you were at the school. I'm assuming as a student, you probably didn't have a resume put together. Oh, God. Um, for a long time I didn't. <laughs> so how would you go about putting you know the resume together and you know getting yourself looking presentable and marketable on, yeah. on, on paper? Well, funny thing is, you know, I had a general resume uh template that I used off of Google, you know, and then converted that to a Word doc. I didn't realize how bad my resume was though, honestly, because I, I I got my re- I got my internship through a friend, through a friend recommendation. And, you know, Dr. Ha trusted my friend's recommendation. So he didn't bother looking at our resume. He said, just come over here. We take care of you. We're going we're gonna to start from scratch. We're going to get you Love. get you fighting for the good fight, right? So what was crazy is uh, I didn't realize how bad my resume was until I got rejection letters most of my senior year. Wow. Okay. So when you say bad, can you kind of detail that? Like, what are some of the things that held you back or that, that did make those rejection letters can't come in? Well, the wording on my resume was terrible. You know, I wasn't using uh, professional language. There was no numbers on my resume. There wasn't quantifiable results, mm-hmm. you know, especially working in the STEM field. You need to be able to quantify your results. Ultimately, it all comes down to business. What is the value add that you bring to the table, right? And uh, my formatting was terrible. I probably already said that. I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't put my coursework my important relevant coursework, like my projects on my resume. That's important, right? That's very important. I wasn't uh, explaining my experiences in a professional manner. It was very cut and dry. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't talking about the projects I've done and what value add they were to the business I was currently working for. So it was very, uh, ultimately my resume was very basic. It wasn't like a recruiter would probably look at it and be like, oh, this is just a basic resume. Nothing, nothing catches my eye this probably is not a good fit what i'm hearing it was just like a resume like probably 98 percent of people got out there it's yeah. like we just put something together and because even myself i wasn't that same like how do i format this thing i was on man i was actually i'm, I'm gonna put it out i was on linkedin looking at other people posted their resume so i could see what the format and the wording will look like yeah. so obviously you know you, you took heed to that like how did you change it did you use a service you know did they help you at school or what, what are some of the things that you know got you to where you you, you got it legit yeah so one of one of my mentors was was very kind enough um this is i think november november 2018 i graduated uh, spring 2019 but in november 2018 one of my mentors was kind enough to say hey look the resume is not good all right you're not getting the interviews because he told me the, the truth. He said, Hey, you're not getting interviews because um, the resume is not where it needs to be. You need to, you need to re-examine all the experience you've ever had, you know, up until all of your professional experience and tailor that experience and make it look on the resume that I am a cybersecurity professional or a soon to be cybersecurity professional. Right. It needs to, it needs to, recruiters need to need, need to be able to look at it and say, Oh, this person took their time with this. This person knows what they're talking about. This is this is a well formatted, well tailored resume, you know. So we had again. It took multiple iterations. A good resume takes multiple iterations, right? If uh, it, you're not going to get it down on the first try, I can guarantee that a great resume on the first try you won't get it down. It Do you time. have multiple resumes, or is it just like you have one? I, I have I have two. I have one one I tailored. Uh, well, during undergrad, I had I had I had, uh, I had one general uh, resume. Once once we got it, once we got everything figured out, I had one general resume, and that general resume I tailored to, towards whatever company I was I was going to be applying to. Got you. Did you What's update your on? LinkedIn at the same time, or did you have a LinkedIn profile? I did have a LinkedIn profile, but it wasn't. Um, I mean, it wasn't. Well, right now my LinkedIn profile is a little outdated, but it was way outdated when I when I had <laughs> it was way worse than it is now. It was that way, way, way back. <laughs> yeah, it was bad, man. It was bad. Nah, that's so. Can you talk about some of the projects that you did while you were in school? Yeah, so in school, I did a. Uh, I had to document. Uh, I did. I did. I did a. A systems analysis. So pretty much, I documented all the pretty much all the different servers and uh, workstations 
we had I created a document with the IP addresses, all, all our products, pretty mm-hmm. much. Not all, but I don't want to lie here. Not all, but a fair amount of our products that we had on campus, and what uh, what what different branches in the school were responsible for maintaining those those systems. So I I did that. Uh, you know, document the IP addresses. You know, I developed uh, I developed a presentation actually on uh, password security and uh, like a password password security tools such as like LastPass. Right, it's like a you know how uh, you know how you have a keychain, right? LastPass is kind of keychain. It has as it has all your keys together. So did you, did you, you made one? You made, no, I made one? No, 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 no. I made a presentation oh, okay. about <laughs> about a password a password management tool called LastPass. To, oh, to, yeah, my, gotcha. uh, to the to the to the to the office, the people I work with, like the different people from different uh, different uh, disciplines and our assistants. I talked about the importance of password security. And I talked about uh, what what the password management tool is. So a password management tool is very similar to a keychain, right? You have your keys, all your keys are put together in one keychain. You have all your different passwords in one place, right? And because it's very hard to memorize a million passwords, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, I'm I'm about to dig in that because this is my part. This is so. What are some of the benefits of somebody having using um, something like a LastPass or a password manager? Vice just Actually, why would they use it? Because I, I, I got you would you would use it because you know it helps you create stronger passwords. You know, for your different services, it forces you to create stronger passwords. And you know, it's trying to manage your passwords on your own is is it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, there's risk. There's risk and rewards to everything, right? If someone t- uh, gets your last pass password, yeah, you're done, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but you'd 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 rather you'd rather have. Um, your, your uh, a last password, a password management tool, uh, kind of like a keychain because it's for convenience, speed, and less stress in comparison to trying to manage your passwords on your own. Because you have different passwords for different, like different websites, you know, different email accounts. So might as well just have it all, all on LastPass. Yeah. It's more efficient. It's about it's, it's about convenience, right? Um, you 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 want you want to have a little bit of convenience there, but. You know, I'd say a password management tool, it relieves a little bit of stress for you. It gets all your keys in one place. Well, as a guy that wants to steal the passwords ethically, Mm. I would say that like on on top of everything that that you're saying is people just have lazy passwords. You know, like you said, it's it's hard to, you know, manage passwords. So sometimes you might reuse the same password multiple times. You might change that letter here and there. Yeah. But um, one of the things you didn't you didn't talk about on that is it'll actually generate strong passwords for the person. So mm-hmm. that's by itself is that that's a winner. Like if you could push a button, you don't got to remember yeah. it. Just remember that master one that you set up. Right. You're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. You remember one, 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 one big password and all the other passwords generated for. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So no. So you did the presentation like, dude, I, I, I think it already sounds cool. I didn't heard the presentation, but what yeah. was like the, the feedback from it? Uh, the, the feedback was generally positive. I mean, I was nervous. I was very nervous. I mean, I was kind of new to uh, to the IT field in general. And, um, you know, it, I, I was fortunate to have and an, like the audience was about like 10 people. They were they were kind enough to, you know, to say, hey, wow, that's great presentation. You know, um, it was a very nerve wracking. And, but they did. They did tell me like, "Thank you for teaching us the importance of password security and why we need to implement password security in our daily lives and at our jobs and outside of that as well." Nah, that's cool. so. What you do in the presentation, um, you know, back back during that time, is that something that you do now when you're in your job? Like, I know you didn't mention it now, but has that helped you? Not 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 currently my job, but but doing that, it did give me a little bit more confidence during meetings to talk about certain topics. And I won't talk about here, but talk about certain topics. <laughs> it gives you a little a level of confidence. Yeah, because it gives you a level of confidence, you know, when you're doing presentation, then as an undergrad, you know, you don't know not that much. But now I know a little bit more. And it's like, okay, I, I, I can talk about these things. I can, you know, I can share this information. I can challenge certain things during meetings. You know, it gives you a little bit of confidence. It definitely does. Yeah. So, I, man, one of the things I'm curious, because I know before we, you know, we before we push record, we had a little chat and, I'm curious to know, like, where do you want to like go in your career? Like, what's what's your roadmap? Like, what's not? It's not really an end game because, like we said before, we even yeah. push record. You can go so many places in cybersecurity, but do you have somewhere where you kind of got your eye on right now? Yeah. So right now, my my main thing is uh, 
I mean, I, I'm just, I, I did for my first year working in the field, I did mostly, uh, I did risk governance and compliance work. So I did a lot of, uh, a lot of documentation, updating documentation, creating documentation packages, and, you know, making sure that, you know, the appropriate information is in that documentation and sending that as a package to our customer. I did most of that, most of that type of work, the RMF type of work. Mm-hmm. And, um, I did more, most of the system security engineering I did it this past year. So, um, right now I'm, I'm getting my master's, master's right now in, um, Cybersecurity management policy. So understanding how to uh, how to implement cybersecurity from a from a leadership perspective, not from not necessarily from a technical perspective. Yeah. You know? and, uh, right now, honestly, my goal I'm just trying to squeeze in time to learn some uh, some cloud. You know, and uh, I'm just, I seen I'm, it. I seen you got the certification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to get up there, man. There's, there's a lot of lot of great people on LinkedIn who are so inspiring, man. And uh, trying to get a my a cloud solutions architect understand the AWS architecture a bit more. Um, my goal is not to become a subject matter expert in, in, uh, in, uh, in the cloud space, if you will, but more of someone uh, who understands the different disciplines in the technology and become a business information security officer. Not necessarily a CISO, but like, you know, uh, a, a, a BISO is more of the, the individual that's kind of assigned to different business units in a, in a team. Yeah, and then how to implement different things. Dude, Correct. that is... Uh, yeah, that that is awesome, dude. Like you got me hyped. Like so, along that path, um, are are you gonna get more certifications? Or oh, is definitely. It- yes, yeah. <laughs> definitely. We definitely have to get some more certifications. Um, for me, my main thing is, uh, I'm, and I'm pretty sure you're probably on the same page. Like, you know, I don't want to blindly get certifications. You know, waste time yeah. and resources. Blindly getting certifications that are not aligned to my career trajectory. So right now, uh, this year, next year, get a couple cloud certs. You know, get the solutions architect associate, possibly get a security specialty or maybe the AWS Pro. We'll see. But get my master's degree, get the solutions architect, um, get the the pro or the security, one of those two, and then from there um, begin studying um, more of a more uh, more project management type of things. Like study, like probably study. I'm gonna study for the PMP and the CISSP eventually. And then yeah. once after the CISSP, probably go to the CISSP cloud specialization. From there, I think I should have, mm. a, should have a, a very strong profile for someone who has the skill sets and the knowledge to become a business information security officer. Yeah, man, it's like you, you're going to be above and beyond. Just talking to you throughout our conversation, I would have thought that you already had the PMP. Like the way you broke down how, you know. Man, I wish I had the PMP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because no one, no, no, no one talks about this enough. Like uh, how, like uh, how, like project management skills actually like translate to cybersecurity, like so smoothly. Yeah, so smoothly. And what's so funny is for everybody, you can be a project manager in cybersecurity. We literally have a project manager assigned to our security operations center. Correct. And, like they didn't need to transfer their skills; they just needed to say, "I want to get into cybersecurity." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like how you said, when you're working with teams, you got all these different things going on all these different moving pieces you mm-hmm. gotta know how to orchestrate it right it, it is a beast yes you gotta know how to orchestrate <laughs> it there's different moving pieces there's limited time limited money right people with different values different personalities right everybody has different some people have different goals some people yeah. are more selfish than others so it's kind of like playing chess where do you put the pieces in the machine to get the best output and that's that's one thing i like about working in the seal yeah i can tell I me mean, you got i feel like this whole conversation been nothing but teeth on both sides <laughs> oh man, I'm hyped! <laughs> yeah, no, great conversation, man. I, I'm always down to share and learn as well, man. I, I yeah. appreciate learning from you through this platform. Now, well, man, I, well, I guess if I can drop a, a bar for you, when, 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 how, how long ago did you finish your, uh, your, your cloud practitioner? So, cloud practitioner, I finished that in February. So, I was studying that on and off from September uh, 2020, and then I really got on it December. I really like. I said, all right, stop playing around. You got to commit. Yeah. And December. So December, January, and then the first week of February, I got took the exam. Okay. So yeah. since it's it's we ain't too far away from from Feb. So what yeah. I would say is, if you have the time, because man, trust me, I just did back to back master's degrees and trying to get it. Like it's a lot to handle. <laughs> but if you do have the opportunity, I would say go right into the solutions architect because. Mm-hmm. It's like building blocks. That Kyle practitioner is a really good foundation to yes. explain AWS in general terms, very high level. This is where very high level, correct? Bucket. But yeah. when you get to that next level with the solution architect, 
you already got the stuff ingrained in your head. So it's so much easier to see how they play together. That's all right. it, that's all the solution architect is, is we, we told you what these tools do. Now, can you put them together in a way that'll benefit a business, you know, or that could set up a, a cloud infrastructure? So I would say if you got the opportunity, man, even if it's just seldomly going through it to keep it fresh in your brain, yeah. I'm, I, I, I'll keep up with you. I'll hold you accountable. But yeah, definitely. Man. That's what I need. That's what we need here, man. <laughs> can't be making excuses and get great outcomes, right? Yeah. You can't make excuses and expect the best outcomes. Yeah, man, definitely. so, man, on that, let, let's, let's kind of shift modes, man. So we, we we went over the business. We talked about, you know, how to get into cybersecurity, what your background was. I'm kind of curious as to, you know, earlier you talked about boxing, you know, and yeah, you also yeah. talked about moving from San Diego to Florida. So those are two yeah. two hot topics. I give you the option. Which, which, which way are we going? Uh, let's, let's talk about my move to San Diego to Florida and how that happened. Right. And then we, we could possibly go into boxing too, you know. Oh yeah, you know, you know, I, I box too. That's why I got excited. Oh man, oh man. That's why yeah. when you said sparring, I was like, you brought back some memories. I almost had a PTSD moment. Oh man, yeah, I love boxing. Love boxing. Well, yeah, real, real, just real quick, uh, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk about the the move from San Diego to Florida. So, so I, during undergrad. I was, I still am, but I'm part of an organization called National Society of, of Black Engineers. It's called NSBE. NSBE. So the organization, for those who don't know, NSBE is dedicated um, to nurturing and cultivating and creating more Black professionals in different STEM disciplines, right? That's the premise of the organization at the undergrad level and the professional level. So it's a great organization and, you know, I'm very grateful for that organization. They usually have conventions every year where it's like, you know, career fairs times 10. You know, every, you know, pretty much every company you could think of, you know, whether it's uh, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google. I actually had a Google interview. I felt pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you had the interview. So we <laughs> I had the interview. I had the interview. But yeah, I went to that, I went to that convent uh that, that conference, the Nesby convention that they have every year. I went I went there in uh spring 2019. This was two, three months before I graduated. And you know, I had multiple different interviews with different companies, and you know. I had about three offers that came out of that, you know, and mm -hmm. and the one that made the most sense for me, right, was the one with Lockheed Martin because they said, hey, we'll give you a, uh, we'll offer you offering a cybersecurity position, you know, and I said, hey, you know, this is the field I want to get into, you know, and, and other 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 uh, other organizations, other companies did offer me different positions, but uh, Lockheed Martin, given uh, given the career trajectory opportunity that they had. Also, the money, you know, kind of. Uh, you don't want to lie about that. I want to be very straight. <laughs> they they wanted to they wanted to pay a decent amount, you know. And for me, taking care of my family, taking care of myself, and my career long term were very important things to me. The only challenge was okay. I have to leave my family go all the way to yeah. Florida, right? So I had to make that adult decision. Okay, listen, you know, um, worst case scenario, I can come back in a year or two, or I might actually love it out there and things might go great. So. Yeah. You know, I, I I was scared making the leave. You know, it was very scared, terrifying because you hear you, you don't you hear pe people share their negative stories about moving out. You know, your friends, your family, sometimes kind of make you feel guilty for making making the the, the decision to take that risk, right? Because your your friends yeah. and family sometimes they don't want to see you, they don't want to see you change. You know, they don't want they don't want to see you move away from the image that they, of you that they already have in their mind. So. I, 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 after talking to different mentors and different people who I believe generally care for me, it made, it made perfect sense. Why wouldn't I take the opportunity then? So um, I took the opportunity. I moved out to Florida. You know, I live in Orlando now. I love it in Orlando. The community of people here is great. It's very diverse. Food is great, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of like San Diego. You see some palm trees here and there. <laughs> It's very, very humid. You know, get, get, sometimes we get hurricane. We, we get hurricane season every year. I know. Y'all got a whole season for hurricanes. I can't, man. Yeah. <laughs> like fire I don't know. Is there, is it, is, like, I know we had fires all the time in California, but is there a fire season or just kind of whatever? I don't, I don't know, man. It's always kind of, it's always something on fire out here. If you, if you so have a fire. <laughs> some type of fire. Someone's having a baby shower getting a fire going. I don't know. You know? Uh, yeah, the movie was great. You know, I was fortunate enough to already, I knew a couple people when I moved out here, but slowly but surely I kind of built my network back up, you know, built a, a, a decent amount of people around me. And I feel like, okay, you know, I feel, I feel like this is home to me. Yeah. So, man, it's, 
I love this conversation. It's flowing like real, just organically. Cause one of the questions I was going to ask you are what are some of the challenges that you face, you know, making that leap, not only into the career, but also out to Florida, whether it was like with friends or family, and you touched on that. So now that, you know, you, you got yourself established, you, you know, your career is going well, you got a great network out there. What kind of feedback are, are your family? Like, do they see, um, you know, the benefit in it? Like how, 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 is, how is their pro- perspective changed? Yeah, my, my immediate family, they see the, they, they see the, the, how good it is for me because of the, the, the fiscal benefit, right? I'm able to, to, to help out, you know, where they usually need help in certain areas around the house, you know, as far as money's concerned. So they see the, they see the immediate benefit. They're like, whoa, like this is, you know, he's, he's able to, to help out. And this is, this is not something my parents were used to, you know, cause undergrad, I was undergrad. I was working during undergrad, but I was working part-time and that part-time money was going to my, uh, was going to my bills. So yeah. <laughs> but, but they were giving me a roof on my head. So I can't complain. I love my parents. Shout out to my parents. Yeah. Yeah. Shout um, out, man. <laughs> Salute. Shout out to them. But yeah, it was, uh, you know, they seen the immediate benefit. They also saw, uh, like my, especially my father, he, he was very proud. He's very, my mom was proud too. But my father he is definitely, you know, uh, he's definitely told me, hey, listen, I'm very proud of you because, you know, you kind of stand on your own too. You're your own person now. You're able to take care of yourself, take care of your family and, and do and do things you wouldn't be able to do if I stayed, which is true. You know, um, yeah. if I stayed, you know, I would have, I would have constantly kind of like, kind of staying, well, it, I'm no judgment to people who, who do stay in their city because I know people who stay in their city that are very successful. But, you know, getting out of your comfort zone and sometimes identifying opportunity, you know, it can take you far. It can take you far. Yeah, man, I, dude, I, I couldn't have said that any better. Like, I, I, I love, like, do you feel like, like you've grown? Like, I didn't know you prior to us talking, but just like hearing your story in a way you, you speak very passionate and like very detailed. Mm-hmm. Um, like, do you see like how, in which ways have you grown outside of obviously, you know, you got a career now, yeah. you know, you're in your industry, but like, as a person, has this been able to translate into other, you know, areas of your life, just that confidence? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, it translates to my, my relationships with my family, you know, um, it translates to relate relationships, you know, um, in your social life with friends, maybe, you know, significant others, you know, you can, you can, you'll be, you'll, you, you feel a bit more confident and, you know, also, by making that big decision to leave, you know, go from one city to another, it kind of taught me that, like, hey, you know, the only person that's going to look out for your best interest is yourself. So you have to make sure that you don't forget that you got to look out for yourself first before you look out for the whole world, the rest of the village. Yeah, you know? it's that airplane thing. You know, if you, if you don't got your oxygen, you can't help the next person. Yeah. Man, this is going so smooth. So, oh man, you got me excited. We are just clicking. So, you know, with you being where you are and going through, you know, your experiences, have you been able to like reach back and like show other people the method or like, have you seen other people get inspired by your move or even show interest in technology since you made that shift? Yeah, I mean, yeah, my cu- my cousins, you know, my, my younger sisters, my, my younger brother, um, some friends back, friends, some some friends back home, and got curious about the cybersecurity field. And I always tell them, like, hey, listen, when you say cybersecurity, I understand you're saying a bunch of things. You know, we got to <laughs> narrow it down. Like, like yeah. I always, usually when people ask me about cybersecurity, I usually send them like a either like a like a mind map where it t- where it has like cybersecurity as, as like a diagram, where it has cybersecurity in the middle, and just and it branches out to the multiple disciplines throughout that. I usually send them that, and I send them the different uh, cybersecurity domains in the CISSP. Real that quick, real quick. So yes. with the mind map, where, do you have that or is it some online? Like how can online. our audience I just, find I just it? Google it? I just Google it. Yeah, like cybersecurity mind map. And I look, obviously one that, that looks legitimate. And I said, okay, this, this one makes sense. You know, because like it talks about the different cyber positions, like cyber project management, cyber law, you know, <laughs> cyber <Yeah>. engineer, <laughs> like, you know, cyber principal, cybersecurity engineer, you know, uh, 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 a crypt, crypt, cryptography uh, subject matter expert, you know. Uh, uh, Man, uh, just, you know, you mean, I think at this point, like you can almost create, you can create roles and positions in cyber. Really create, yeah, at this point, yeah. 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 As long as you can convince the business that it's a value add, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I didn't mean to cut you off though. I just wanted to like, if other people were curious, like where, where could they get a mind map? So you said the, the mind yeah. map and then what else did, did you send out to them? 
I, I sent them the, the, the CISSP domains. I think that's a good job of talking about the different uh, domains of cybersecurity because it goes, it goes over um, cryptography, it goes over uh, um, compliance. I believe it also goes over uh, the uh, vulnerability, vulnerability management, you know, risk management, compliance, all those sorts of different domains. I'm, I'm probably butchering it, but there's, there's like multiple domains in the CISSP. Right. You, you, you're you on point. So with the CISSP, yeah. it's in, I, I don't have my CISSIP, but I got a book yeah. over here for it. So oh, man, I know. So, it's, your way, like, man. <laughs> so it, it's high level, a little bit of everything from a business right. perspective. I think right. that it's very good from somebody that doesn't know where they are because it's not so techy and it's yeah, something yeah. where you can digest it. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I send them those. I send them those things. And look at those different domains, and then from there, you could you could Google these positions and what they do. And uh, you know, I was I was able to I was able to help uh, one person um, in the cybersecurity role. Yeah, that felt great. I was able to get you know I was able to convince uh, one of my friends to major in management information systems, and then tailor their experience with that coursework because you could take a cybersecurity course, you could take a networking course inside the MIS major. So I said, yo, leverage the experiences and the projects you have here and tailor that towards your resume while interning elsewhere and put those two together while being involved on campus and you got yourself a solid resume. And, you know, I was explaining that to him, you know. Also, I, I try to get back where I can, but I also noticed um, something I'm, I'm, as I'm growing, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to make sure that I understand that no matter who, how many times you advise certain people, it's, it's up to them to take, to take the water from the lake. You know, you yeah. Can't to drink the water. You know, you can't you can't force people to to take your advice. You, you give them the advice, you hope they take it, but you don't take it personally if you don't. Which is something I struggle I sh I've struggled with for a long time. Sometimes I still struggle with it, but I think I'm I'm, I'm working on not taking it personally. If, if you give your advice to someone, if they don't take it and it goes bad for them, don't hate them for it. It, it is what it is. Can I give you a bar really quick? Yeah, yeah. All right. It, it just because I literally had this conversation yesterday with one of my buddies, yeah. and. I, I had a, a similar situation where I would reach out to people and, you know, just really just because, you know, once you find out about something that you're so passionate about and you're getting the rewards from it, you want to share that with other people oh um, <laughs> is like yeah. the best way of, you know, helping somebody out is doing it yourself. Because once they see that, what I noticed is once I got dedicated, you know, in this and then also other areas of my life, people that really were interested, I didn't have to go out and get them. They came to me. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then something else that helped it out a lot is I, I didn't have to go back and find people. It, like I, I'm, I'm, I used to be a runner. Mm -hmm. So I used to, everybody was like, man, you, you all, you doing all this running. I see you all across San Diego. I want to go out and join you. But it was like pulling teeth to get them to lace the shoes up to show up and meet me. But it was a lot easier when I started meeting people already on the track, already right. running. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then when other people that did originally get back to me, hit me up, they're like, oh, now I see what you're doing. So just kind of use that same thing. You don't have to take a personal, you know, yeah. just, just do you. And then they'll come around if it's their, when it's their time. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure. We're going to work on not taking it personal if people don't take your advice. Yeah, <laughs> man, because that's right. once again project management, right? You you at work. Some people don't listen. Yeah, yeah, but, that's true. Some people don't listen. So you know, we, we talked about a whole lot of hype. Man, we didn't got emotional. We even talked about the family. You know, teardrop the whole yeah. joint. Um, can you can you talk about some of like some of the things that were hard for you, like in your career during your transition, and you know how you overcame those challenges? Yeah, so some some things that were uh, very difficult, you know, and I'm, and I'm sure a lot of people deal with this is uh, imposter syndrome, right? Feeling like you don't belong in a room, right? You don't because you're not competent enough, you're not good enough to belong in that room. Like, listen, if you're new to a position, yes, you're not gonna know everything. You're not <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna know much if you're new to a position, right? Especially if you're early career, you're not gonna know much going inside a new position. Obviously, you're gonna, you're gonna know some things. But, you know, what I did was early on, I beat myself up so much when I first started for not knowing certain terms, for not knowing um, certain things, certain technical uh, concepts, you know, for not, not knowing certain networking concepts. I beat myself up about it. And um, where I realized, I'm like, hey, listen, you're not going to know everything, especially if you're, if you're starting early on. Well, I mean, no matter what, how high you're up, you go. Always learning. Even, 
Yeah, even 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 the CISO, he's not the most smartest technical person in the room. There's someone else for that, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, so like it's uh, it's it's something that I had to deal with with my imposter syndrome early on, and and kind of telling myself, hey, listen, this is part of the learning curve. You're not gonna know everything, and that's okay. The key is to make sure you're learning every day and progressing, right? I can't I can't be comparing myself to the other guy next to me who who's had 20 years of experience. Yeah. I want I want to be able to speak up during meetings, but I can't compare myself to him. He has a body of work and an experience. And if I want that same outcome, I have to make sure I do the same amount of work, if not more. You know, so understand, you understanding that, that good things take time and understanding that I'm, I'm not about to, you're not about to be a new person in a, in a position, like especially early career, and change the whole landscape of your, of, your, of, your, of your team, of your overall project, you know, make crazy amount of changes coming in. No, it, it, well, it, it, the probability that's small. Let me let me not discourage anybody. The probability that is not very high. You're not probably you going into the team and, and changing things drastically is not very high, you know. But if you tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to make small improvements to myself, and then over time I'm going to make more contributions and then be able to uh, add more value to an organization and, and make things happen the way I see fit and the way I, the way the overall the company sees fit as well, you know. Um, I think definitely that was the biggest challenge for me. Still dealing with it here and there, but I mean, we all, you know, but uh, eventually the goal is to get to a point where like imposter syndrome is not even something I bring up anymore. It's just a thing in the past. Yeah. With that positive shift of your perspective and, you know, just understanding it takes time for you to not even perfect something, but, you know, to develop those skill sets. How did that help like you and your self esteem, but also, you know, your, product, your productivity at work? What kind of effects were that? Yeah, so I actually, you know, funny thing is you bring that up, uh, self-esteem. I failed the security plus twice. <laughs> it, yeah. happens. it happens. It happens. Bro. I failed it twice, man. I failed it end of 2019, early, uh, early 2020. I failed it. No, 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 not end of 2019. End of 2018, early 2019. I failed it. I failed it twice, and and that that hurt me so bad. So when I got my new position, the condition was of me getting hired was, hey, you better get your security plus within six months. It's right? back. <laughs> so, yeah. So I had from June 2019 to December 2020 to get my life together and get that security plus. So the pressure was run. That's when the imposter syndrome was also kicking in. I started my new role. I was I didn't feel like I was contributing anything. Well, of course, you're new. You're not going to contribute that much. You're trying, <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to learn the language. You're trying to learn the, the, the this whole new world of corporate. Drinking through a, through a fire hose. Yeah. You're learning so many. You're learning so many things. So, it's yes, you're not going to you're not going to you're not going to be able to do a lot. But you, you're able to learn a lot. That's, that's, that's cool part. You have to learn a lot. Yeah. So, and, uh, once I got my security plus, I proved to myself, like, okay, I, I'm actually, I have the skills to learn something and apply something, right? I'm not, I'm not inadequate. I, I actually have basic fundamental understanding of cybersecurity. Obviously, the security plus is a million different topics, but it proves that yeah, you're able to learn. You're able to learn something and, and stick with it, right? And once I got my security plus in my job, you know, we make mistakes. We, we fail at things, you know, um, you're not always going to take a win on the job. Some days you're going to shoot and you're going to miss miserably, but that, that's part of the, that's part of life. Right. Yeah. But my, my confidence grew after, after I got my security plus and um, it also grew. It also grew when, um, when uh, I took on, uh, I took on more than, uh, than I, than, than I was, than I was expected to take on. Hmm. So at what point that's, that's really interesting. I think that's like a, a key moment. That's like turning that notch up or shifting the year. What, what motivated you to, to say, Hey, I want to take on more opportunity right now while, while you're still in the development stage for yourself. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what motivated me definitely was because um, I was, I was taking on tasks and um, what was expected of me, I was getting them done in a, in a timely manner. I'm like, Hey, you know, I think I can do a little more here. You know, because I felt like, hey, if I'm not doing a little bit more, I think I'm kind of robbing myself of an opportunity to learn something new, you know. And sometimes we, we got to understand, like, hey, you know, you want your job, obviously, to be like, you know, you, you don't want to be too stressed on your job. I get it. Also, you don't want to be too complacent. We're not learning anything. Listen, there's not a long-term value add. Because you, yeah. you could be doing the same thing for two, three years straight and, and not get anywhere, you know. <laughs> You, know, you, you don't need a software you update. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you need a software update. So I have to I have to ask myself, okay, you know, I need to learn something new. Let me probably, you know, ask for something more or can I shadow someone on what they're doing? At least, can I do that? And, you know, that's pretty much how I began to grow in my role. So you just dropped another bar. 
if you guys are listening or you gals are listening, you said you reached out. You were proactive. You didn't wait for people to come to you and say, hey, we got some extra tasks for you. You actually went out and seek that opportunity so you can get the information. Yeah, yeah. You cannot wait. You cannot wait. That is any any person you see on LinkedIn, on social media, on on anywhere that that sh- that you find admirable that are doing respectable things, they did not wait. They did not wait. We don't we don't talk about people who wait. We, we don't have conversations about people who wait. Name, you, know, you know, we don't talk we don't talk about people who wait. Any person I I've I've noticed, like uh, any people who are in like higher level positions or like in respectable positions that are doing great things, they never waited. They never waited. They, ne- they never they never wait for someone else to give them the approval stamp. They did the work and they continued to work. And, you know, naturally the approval came with it. You know, when you're exceptional at what you do, of course the approval is going to come with it. You know? Yeah, man. Just so just to, to sprinkle a little bit of what you got on it. I can't say it as good as you did, but now you got it, I tend to notice, you know, just just growing up and being in different kind of businesses because cybersecurity, like the actual position is new to me, too. Yeah, but yeah. one of the things I noticed is a lot of people, they are comfortable with being complacent or yeah. staying where they are. So just by you going out and seeking that additional information, the same way you decided at the very beginning of our conversation to reach out to people and build your network, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't do that. So what they do, they pour more into you. And once you handle that, then that's why you see people in these upper positions because first, there's not enough people that really want them. And those people that do, once you got there, I'm pretty sure you got hungry and you went on the roll. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Man, all right. So we're we talking about the developing skills. I think this might be the last segment uh you know we, we've been rocking bro i don't even know how long we've been on here i ain't even looked at the clock yet yeah, we've been but, on uh, for a minute <laughs> so so can you talk to us about the boxing like you over there floating boxing. Mayweather, man i seen you got the body like you you <laughs> listen listen this is this is, I, I i gotta be i gotta be pretty boy before i became mo- become money money Mayweather. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh yeah i started boxing last year i uh I, I, actually i just sparred with one of my good friends out here his name is Sully. I sparred with him and, and he beat me up. That's pretty much what happened. He beat the life out of me. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and he was taking it real easy on me too. And, you know, kind of kind of got that competitor out of me. I'm like, I'm going to find the closest boxing gym and figure this out. So I signed up for title boxing for about two, three months. I did title boxing. I was, you know, doing the boxing training workouts and the cardio and everything. But I finally hired uh, one of uh, my friend's old coaches to teach me the mechanics of boxing, the jabs, the crosses, you know, the basic fundamentals, the footwork. You know, making sure I do my jump rope and all that stuff. So I have a boxing trainer that I train with once a week. And sometimes I try to get sparring with my, my friend Sally from time to time. But yeah, boxing is it's it's one of those sports where we when you do it, like you play sports, you don't play boxing. You no, know? you don't. <laughs> you don't play boxing. That's this it's, is it's a I whole like, different strategy when you get hit God. in the face. <laughs> it's like it's like playing chess, but with real life consequences. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, you're, con- you're constantly in there, you're like, oh my god. Like, like I'm trying to take his head off. He's trying to take my head off, right? I can't, I can't let up on the gas pedal because I, I can get hurt. There's, there's instant consequences, you know, and long-term consequences if we're not careful boxing, right? But it's, it's one of those sports where you, uh, where you kind of, it's very humbling, like getting punched in the mouth, you know, like Mike Tyson, everybody got, got everybody has a plan <laughs> to get punched in the mouth. It's very humbling. And like, just understand like, wow, like, you know, there are people who dedicate their lives to this. Yeah. yeah, people dedicate their lives. You got a new that. appreciation for it, huh? I appreciate the sport so much. And now, whenever I watch it, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I don't get to watch it all the time, you know. But whenever I do watch, I'm like, wow, this is this is pretty awesome. I have so much respect for fighters in general because literally, they're, they're literally putting their life on the line. You're literally saying, hey, listen, I don't care what the outcome is. Like, I, I don't care. I don't care what I have to give up because you're risking a lot, right? Cybersecurity, we're always thinking about risk. Right, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and boxing is so risky. It is so risky. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't do it professionally, but but just sparring, I'm like, whoa, this is I, that person just punched me in the mouth. Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> That's when, real. When you said, like, um, like chess. Like, yeah. I, I've been fighting for a long time. You know, yeah. probably more so consistently like these last two years. But yeah, um. You, uh, you start to understand, you think, you look at these guys, you know, like, oh, it's all physical. They're just punching each other. It's like more mental. It's 100% mental. And yeah, dude, like when you break down the mechanics of it, it's crazy. And just that humbleness too, like you never know who you're going to be in a ring with. Like my, at my gym, 
we spar every Friday. Like I go to a gym where it's like all fighters. Like it's it's not like let's go and get a cardio. It's like no, nah, you're gonna show up and on Friday bring your mouthpiece. Uh, <laughs> bring your mouthpiece. Bring your mouth. <laughs> but man, like to be yeah. honest, like it, it's crazy because like whether somebody is young, small, like I didn't got tapped up. I learned you <laughs> you learn <laughs> fast by everybody. But um, no, nah, man, that, that's awesome. So you 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 you've been doing it for a whole year. Let me know when you can beat your man up. <laughs> I, I, I think I think I'm 100 years too early. All right. <laughs> I'm 100 years too early. I think I think there's much more work for me to get done, man. No, but I no. love boxing, though. I encourage everybody to do some form of physical sport, um, doing some form of combat sport. You, you need something that humbles you, and I think boxing does just that. Got you. Is there anything else that you do outside of tech? Because I know we I like to focus on cybersecurity, but you know, just yeah. as a person, like, what else do you kind of do, like, to keep yourself sane and you know healthy yeah i you know i i try i try getting going to my, my the gym right next to my house getting some exercise in you know that's pretty fun and um you know boxing i like hiking you know when i used to live in san diego i used to do hike all the time go to cal come back, come back. Come on, God, take on some trails <laughs> yeah i like i like hiking you know i like going on walks you know just appreciating nature a little bit you know i'm on my phone a lot but sometimes i need to take get off of it a little bit appreciate yeah. it that, that's a that cool getaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, man, and I'm, and I'm a foodie too. I'm a foodie too. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going to deny it. I have a sweet tooth. I like. I like. I like cake. I like. I like cookies. I like chocolates. <laughs> I, I, I eat less of it, but you know. Yeah. Hey. Sometimes you got to indulge, man. It, it, it's it's there for a reason, right? Don't just. Mm. It's there for a reason. It is like there I, the one statement I never understood is you can't have your cake and eat it too. That's why I got the cake to eat it. <laughs> I paid for the cake to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. So as, as we close out, man, is there what question that I didn't ask you, but you you wished I would have asked? You got some good questions, man. <laughs> um, probably what, what, what would I have done different? Boom. What, what did you have done different? Well, in a perfect world, I wish I could I could have I, I could have started earlier. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm here. I wouldn't have done nothing different. Okay. Well, you know me, man. I dig into it. So earlier, let's let's explain yeah. that. So when you say yeah. earlier is like, what does that look like for you? Is that like elementary school? Like, give us an idea. I wish I, I mean, high school, there were, there were, there were, there were clubs, there were computer clubs, you know, so I wish I was doing programming or learning these technical things early on. And then from there, I could have developed so much and community college could have developed so much. Right. And then just looking back at like, wow, like, like you don't realize how much opportunity you have until your passes. You're like, whoa, that was a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Well, nah, man. Well, that, that's, we're here now, though. We're here now. Hey, yeah, we're but that's, now. that's all that matters. Like, dude, I swear it's the same conversation. It's, yeah. it's, people get the information at different stages. You might have got it when you were younger. Like, what if, you know, um, the, the professor that, that told you about cybersecurity said yeah. it, like you said, the first time you didn't listen to it, but the second oh. time it, it hit you when you needed it. Yeah. So it's the same thing. You get to where you are when you need to be there. But mm -hmm. man, this has been an awesome conversation. I think I had some, I don't even want to, I'm going to put it out. I think this is like the hottest conversation, bro. Hey, this listen, is the dopest conversation. Know, don't hype me up, man. Don't hype me up. I, yeah. I'm, I'm always down to learn <laughs> and conversate, man. Can, can you tell um, the audience how they can get in contact with you and, you know, just your social handles? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. You know, feel free to contact me on LinkedIn. You know, uh, connect with me there. Abdurrahman Muhammad. Uh, first name Abdurrahman, last name Muhammad. And, you know, I work at Lockheed Martin. And, you know, feel free to connect. If you're looking for tips on getting into cybersecurity, I'm more than glad to help. And if you just want to just connect and, you know, grow your network, I'm more than glad to connect as well. Man, hey, I appreciate it. I will put A's information in the show notes. So, Phil, man, reach out to this brother. Show him some love. He made a big leap from San Diego. Man, I, I, I was on his, I'm on his LinkedIn right now. He started off as a fast food clerk. Look, yeah, look at where he's at. He, yeah. This is an amazing person. So y'all reach out to him. Um, once again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate everybody for listening or watching this on whatever platform you may have been getting this good information. And hey, this is Antoine Matthews, Cyber Chat. Talk soon. Thank you, Antoine. Y'all have a good one. My man.